Olá from the beautiful city of Porto in Portugal. On our walk today, you will see the beautiful streets lined with cobblestones, medieval ruins, and even the iconic 19th century railway station before we sit down to enjoy an aromatic coffee tasting at Colma Coffee Room. Welcome to Road to Coffee, and remember to like and subscribe Colma Coffee Room is located quite close to the Sao Bento train station in Porto, about a 6 to 10 minute walk. So to get to our destination, we are going to cross the river to Vila Nova de Gaia, which is opposite Porto. Our route will begin at the General Torres station, where we will walk along the Blue Route and cross to Porto over this iconic iron bridge called Pont Louis Jum. From the bridge, we will pass through the streets of Porto until we reach Calma Coffee Room. So let's get going! We're doing things a little differently today. I have asked the very handsome Michael to join and converse with me as we walk. Voltar. <laughs> Hi. So this channel is obviously about coffee and traveling. What are your thoughts on these two topics? So I think this topic goes hand in hand. Uh, you can travel everywhere and anywhere and always find a coffee shop, have something to eat, try something new and see something new. So yeah, I think it goes hand in hand. Yeah, I think the, there were two words that I first learned in Portuguese and the one, well, two phrases and the one was you gosto de vinho and the other one was um, queres um café for your gran whenever I asked her if she wanted coffee yeah for sure that's a very a very important terminology here is café or mabica as, as I would say if you want really amazing views of the river and the cities you can walk up this road to the Miradura and you can visit the church or igreja that is also up there I want to tell you about a really cool park with beautiful views of the river as well. It's called Jardim du Morro and you can enjoy a glass of wine here, watching the sunset in the evenings. It's a pretty cool and popular activity to do. I love Portugal and I know you do too, but of course there are always challenges when you are learning a new language and when you've moved to a new country. And I always hear people tell me some funny stories about how they maybe misunderstood words. Do you have a funny story to share with us about that? Yeah, it's between the two words of siu and sao. Um, what do they mean? Siu uh, means on heat, so if an animal is on heat or dog is on heat, and sao is like the sky in, in Portuguese. And um, I'm not going to mention names, but someone got them confused in the pronunciation. I wonder who that was. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the story kind of went of um, how uh, you were telling someone. We were talking about one of my favorite desserts in Portugal, which is called Natas do Sao, but I think I was saying it as Natas do Siu. Meaning um, the Natas. Cream on heat. The cream on heat, exactly <laughs> that. And the people looked at us with a very puzzled and bewildered look. Yeah. And uh, none the wiser did we not know that we were saying that the cream was on heat. Even though walking is great, you can also use the metro system, which is passing us by right now, and it is quite affordable to get around this city. Once you reach the end of the bridge, you can of course see the beautiful views of the Douro River, and you can also see the Murala Fernandina or the Fernandine Walls of Porto, which are medieval fortifications built in the 14th century. To 
your left you can see the Sé do Porto or the Cathedral of Porto, a Roman Gothic cathedral from the 17th century. It's really worth the visit if you are in Porto. On the topic of languages and dialects, you speak three languages, which is really, really impressive. And in terms of Portuguese, what is your favorite word? To vent. So if you want to vent to someone or just let out how you feel, does it far. And what about your most difficult word? Reunião. Uh, Reunião. Uh, Reunião. What? Am I saying it correctly? Uh, re <laughs> this, is this is a struggle I have myself. It's reunião. Um, what does uh, it mean? Clearly you can see it's a difficult word for me. And that means meeting. Now, I have a lot of meetings <laughs> and I clearly can't get this word right after all these meetings I've had. Ahead of us is the iconic Sao Bento railway station. At the moment, this part of the city is under a lot of construction, but despite the construction, the charm of Porto is not lost on us. So inside the 19th century railway station, you can see the amazing and elaborate Azulejo tile work. It's really impressive to see. There are a lot more words that I struggle to pronounce and one of them is a hairdresser. Do you know what that is in Portuguese? Cabeleiro. <laughs> Hair is cabelo, cabelo. but mm -hmm. a hairdresser is a cabeleireiro oh, cabeleire. or cabeleireira, um, depending on the masculinity it's another word or for femininity. Me. It's difficult to pronounce. <laughs> and then any word with a double R in it. So um, being a native Afrikaans speaker, we're very good in Afrikaans language of pronouncing the G, so it's a kh that we pronounce, and it's the same for double R's in Portuguese, but I still struggle with that. So how would you say car in Portuguese? Carro. See that? Carro. That's very difficult for me. So definitely one of the more difficult aspects of learning Portuguese. How are you experiencing Portugal? I think with any place that you move to as a foreigner, um, there's become the good and the bad, um, but we try and focus on the good and based on that it's been wonderful. We wouldn't want to have it any other way. Food's good, alcohol's yeah, good. The astronomy is amazing here. Yeah, the astronomy is really the good. The wine also. The people are also really friendly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and every day there's something new to see, taste. And uh, yeah, actually, mm. and um, learn. Yeah. You know, the music industry has also, well, the, the artist industry has also really cool. Yeah, I agree. We we listened to some modern Fadu the other day, and it was quite a cool experience. Technically, we didn't have to cross the street. So in hindsight, before crossing the street, you could have just turned right but our GPS led us down the wrong road and we realized here, so we had to turn around and cross the street again to the other side and there you will find Kalma Coffee Room. We ordered the Brew Flight Experience, where you pick one coffee origin and three brewing methods. 
This was a one-of-a-kind experience for me because I could actually taste the difference in how you can prepare the coffee. And the amazing thing is that all of this cost us 9 euros or in Portuguese, 9 euros. That's a cheers from us and it's time to say goodbye, Michael. Bye, Michael. <laughs> Bye.